Folks, it is November 23rd, day before Thanksgiving. We've got another load here. Already done a big load today, but here's another one. This is all the uh, understory plants, the shrubs and bushes, some tree cuttings, arrowwood, swamp, titty, oak, all kinds of goodies. It's um, all still green and uh, goats love it and since goats are all fenced into smaller areas right now while we do expansion and repairs and closing up loops on our fencing systems as well as installing completely new ones in places um they're all getting cuttings like we said before we've documented it the water levels have dropped and so our fences that terminated in the water before are now high and dry, so all those paddocks there can't hold goats until we fix them. And we're getting on it, but we got some other priorities right now with everything else going on. So, I'm just putting some of these guys out here right now. All this good green stuff for them to eat. Over at the other lake, I've got other goats that are getting fed. And I'm continuing on with work on many different tasks today. Keeping these goats happy. Right, Estella? Come here. Hey, little Bodie. <laughs> See little Isabella and her two little Dolines. And we got Brown Eyed Baby Blue over here. We've got the big white beauty, Blanca. And then the bad girl here, big bad girl, Nina. The biggest doe of all out here, the heaviest, biggest doe. When is she going to have the kid? I don't know. But for the first time in our history of uh, quite a few years now, we've had a goat break another goat's leg with the horns. This goat right here broke the little blue buckling's leg, and he's hunkered down in the cabin in a smaller enclosed area getting plenty of good food and minerals and water and a little fresh warm milk and probiotics in the bottle. His mama is right here, which is also the sister of Nina, so you know she just <laughs> she injured her sister's um, son, but we are working on him and we are Optimistic, I don't know, that, it's amazing, you, got, it's, it's, you wouldn't believe a, a leg could heal, but when it's shattered like that, I mean, when it's broken, and, um, but goats can heal different than humans, and we've got it wrapped up, and we're watching it very closely, checking temperatures, uh, making sure not to cut off circulation too much, and trying to keep it immobilized, we've got a special device arriving any day now, um, that will help uh, support the hawk there, the rear leg joint. So anyways, we are enjoying these freshly cut greens, aren't we goats? Takes a bit of work to cut this stuff down, but <laughs> less, almost as, as much time as it takes to cut it down or less, the goats already gobble it all up. That arrowwood is a real great resource here. That's the leaves right there. That's the arrowwood shrub there. This is the swamp titty here. We've got some oak. Lots of goodies. Needless to say, but I will always emphasize it, these goats are happy and healthy because of the abundance of forage, the variety in forage materials that we provide for these goats. 
Any kind of a conception that goats are supposed to be pinned into some square area and just eating grass, it's, it's total delusion. For one thing, this time of year, the grass is dead brown. It's dying from the frost. The bahia is going out and it's going to be gone for three months. These greens, too, will be going dormant very soon. And the only remaining um, will be things like pine and um, holly, but we don't feed them holly. They don't need holly. Um, bamboo actually grows here in some invasive plots. Not on our property. There's a few little stalks in some places, but... There's other groves of it around in the area, and we're looking to start harvesting some of that for some greens. Other than that, it's all left to what we can grow, folks, and that's legumes and brassicas, grasses, grains, and that's all happening out in different areas of the property right now. So, uh, like right over here, there's a bunch of ryegrass growing over in that uh, paddock there beyond the white blackberry grove over there where those larger pines and the dead tree are. The ryegrass is actually growing very well over there. So we keep it isolated from the ghosts and let it grow up. And then there's uh, clovers going in a big way over here in some of these open areas. It's all management. Have to do it for the love of the goats, by the way. All this green you see growing in here, those are carrots. Those are all little carrot plants growing in spinach there beyond. Right now, this is this is the, the main course right here, these, these cuttings, and we'll keep cutting it, daily work, cutting this stuff until it goes dormant, and we can't seem to get any more green, and then by that time, their diet is more consisting of hay and um, you know, feed pellets and supplementary um, seeds and kelp, and they're consuming much more minerals, mineral salts, and... Uh, and then we're growing more and more for them and feeding them the green things that we grow. So it's a dynamic process. It changes throughout the year. And normally they're all harvesting this the material themselves. But there's times of the year when we have to have them fenced in in places where this is not growing. And we need to cut it and bring it to them. So we're dedicated to doing it. It's a lot of work, but we love these goats. We're going to do everything we can for them and everything we can to protect them from the persecution, the haters, the people that have attacked and killed these goats and continue to threaten their very existence. We'll continue to defend ourselves and try to protect them from the evil forces that exist out there. We appreciate all who love and support these goats. Please keep in contact with us. We do have professional channel material that's available only to the subscribers. And we have other videos that are just open to the public. And um, those who are really dedicated should get into our professional channels because we go into depth. We go into things you won't see otherwise because it's just it just gets intense. And there's, there's all kinds of drama. There's ups and downs. There's life and death. And there's... People care enough that want to follow that and raise goats themselves and strive for the absolute, absolutely top quality care that ab absolute premium conditions, highest probability for survival conditions for the goats. That's what we're striving for.